Hi, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta and I'm a consultant cardiologist in York Hospital. I um, trained as an imaging cardiologist, but more recently have become really interested in the subject of preventative cardiology. And this is really because I've noticed in my time as a consultant that um, despite all the advances that we're making in treating cardiovascular disease, we're not really impacting significantly on the prevalence or the incidence of cardiovascular disease. And really, to my mind, the only way to try and uh, get on top of this is uh, by focusing on prevention. Uh, and it, is, uh, it will come as no surprise to any of you that, in general, uh, lifestyle choices plays, play a huge role on the development of cardiovascular disease and on overall cardiovascular and general health. Okay. Um, most uh, doctors recognize the importance of advising patients on a healthy lifestyle. Unfortunately, we all lead very busy uh, professional lives and often we don't have enough time to spend with the patient to talk to them about their lifestyle choices. Uh, until about a year ago, um, if anyone asked me about lifestyle choices, I would say, well, it's important to stop smoking, it's important to lose weight, it's important to get regular exercise. Uh, and I suspect that if I ask a lot of other cardiologists, they would say that these are really important factors. One aspect of lifestyle, however, which is often not addressed and commonly neglected, is the importance of sleep. And today I thought I'd do a short video on the impact of sleep on overall health. Now, much of what I'm going to talk about today is already emphasized in a recent paper uh, by the American Thoracic Society. Uh, this is by Mukherjee et al., and it was published in June 2015 in the American Journal of Respiratory Critical Care Medicine. Um, and they published recommendations on the importance of healthy sleep uh, on overall health. Okay. So the first thing to say is that sleep is an essential biological function. Uh, it is necessary for survival. We know ourselves that if we go without sleep for any duration of time, we feel awful. Uh, we know from studies in rats that if you deprive them of sleep, death occurs within three weeks. Sleep is essential because it allows the body to recover. Uh, it allows us to conserve energy and therefore it's essential for survival. It has lots of other important roles as well. It is very important in neural development. It is very important in memory. Uh, it is important for emotional well-being. It plays a very important role in cardiovascular and metabolic function. And it also allows uh, cellular toxin removal. And therefore, it's critical for good health and overall quality of life. Now, in general, the overall, um, the optimal sleep duration is thought to be between seven and nine hours, okay? Um, there have been studies which have shown that people often overestimate the amount of sleep they're getting. And actually, people who think they're getting enough sleep are often sleep deprived and chronically so. Um, we know from studies that short sleep duration, i.e. sleep of less than six hours, is a associated with adverse outcomes, and these include uh, development of diabetes, development of hypertension, uh, depression, obesity, uh, atheroma, um, and uh, adverse events in general. People who sleep for longer than nine hours have also been found to have adverse events as a consequence, so or are associated rather than a consequence, are associated with adverse events. Again, again, development of hypertension, diabetes, obesity, depression, psychiatric disturbances. Uh, it's also important to say that sleep disturbances are very common and they can cause significant morbidity and substantial economic impact. But it's also important to realize that even though they're very common, they're often neglected, but they're actually very easy to treat. Uh, many patients with sleep disturbances remain undiagnosed and untreated. There was a study in Australia which uh, suggested that the cost of sleep-related disturbances was about $7.5 billion uh, a year. Um, undiagnosed sleep apnea, which is one of the common disorders of sleep, um, is responsible for a seven-fold increase in road traffic accidents. And sleep disturbances also have a huge impact on productivity at work. In terms of sleep disturbances, there are two main sleep forms of sleep disturbance. By far and um, away, the commonest um, 
is insomnia. I used to think it would be sleep apnea, but it is actually insomnia. And in some studies, uh, there's been a suggestion that almost one in two people in the Western world have insomnia. And the second commonest sleep disturbance is sleep apnea. And now, by uh, most recent estimates, 13% of men and 6% of women have sleep apnea. 80% of sleep apnea remains undiagnosed in the general population. And one of the important things is that between 60 to 90% of patients who have sleep apnea are also obese and have a BMI of greater than 30. Uh, patients who have sleep apnea often have daytime sleepiness, they complain of snoring, they complain of nocturia, they complain of poor concentration. Uh, and the long-term consequences of sleep apnea are that it causes an increased risk of hypertension, diabetes, undoubtedly atrial fibrillation, uh, increases the risk of heart failure and strokes and impairs quality of life. There are also links where um, uh, there is an association with development of diabetes, some forms of cancer and depression. And there are some races which are more prone to developing sleep apnea and particularly Eastern Asians are more likely for the same body weight, more likely to have sleep apnea. And they say that this is because of differences in the craniofacial structure. Uh, treatment is easy, CPAP and weight reduction. Uh, and, but the important thing with sleep apnea is that you have to be cognizant that sleep apnea exists because very few people will come to you and say, I have sleep apnea. Uh, but when you see patients who have high blood pressure and who have diabetes and who are overweight, and the majority of our patients are like that, think of sleep apnea because this may offer um, an easy uh, uh, treatment which will uh, make a significant impact on that patient's quality of life may help in reducing their blood pressure without the without um, uh, the requirement for extra additional antihypertensives. Um, <clears throat> the second uh, sleep disturbance that is common is insomnia. This is extremely common. Uh, in one study, there was a prevalence of up to forty eight percent of people um, have sleep uh, have in, uh, have insomnia, and the prevalence is increasing. Uh, people who have insomnia also have a higher incidence of hypertension, heart disease, chronic pain, some forms of cancer, and diabetes. They're more likely to be absent from work. They're more likely to be involved in road traffic accidents. Uh, and often what happens is these people go to their GP or they go to the doctor and they say, well, look, I'm having trouble sleeping. And then they're given um, uh, sleeping pills. And there is little attention paid to the side effects and there's no real clear follow-up plan for the desired effects. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy works very well for sleep, therefore for insomnia, and um, is often underused. Uh, and um, I think it is really important uh, that uh, the, 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 use, the cognitive behavioral therapy is uh, emphasized and uh, used in the treatment of sleep disturbance. Uh, so I think uh, in general, we as physicians need to wake up to the importance of sleep um, and uh, actively go and look for it in our patients because a majority of uh, our patients will have some form of sleep disturbance and treating it can be extremely rewarding both for the clinician and the patient. I hope um, I continue to do these blogs and um, Hopefully next month I will. I would quite like to do a blog on the role of stress uh, and heart disease. Uh, so thank you for listening. Take care. Bye.